Hey, Paul. So last time we talked about calibrating the NP, when is there going to be a task that kind of helps us walk through that if we're doing the user calibration? Well, with this update that had a lot of these functional improvements that I showed off just a second ago, there is now also a um, task associated with uh, calibration. Um, and it feels a lot like the ACM task. We use the, uh, people had a lot of success with that task. So we use that as kind of the benchmark, but we made some improvements as well. So one thing you and I talked about during our last AMA is the importance to run the calibration in place of a normal test. So now we're just, um, you know, for best results. So um, the first thing you're going to see in the task is that, hey, I hear, I understand that I want to run this calibration when my MP would normally be testing. You don't have to do that, but we do strongly advise it to give you the best calibration possible. Yeah, and I think one of the things to make note of is that when you do run the calibration, it's going to, it's not going to show you the results of that calibration test. And when I do this and you do it in place of a test, right? If you start your calibration before your normal test time would, would trigger, it's not going to run your normal test. So one thing to make note of is it may not show you that result. So you might get no test in 24 hours for that first cycle. But then the second cycle that comes along, you're going to have the first calibrated test results for your NP. Yeah, and if you do it within about an hour, you're probably not going to have that issue um, of, of any kind of error or anything like that um, because uh, the, t the calibration itself takes about 90 minutes and then your next test will be in less than 24 hours um, after that calibration. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, and there are, there are reasons, um, many reasons why we make this recommendation, but this has just been our own experience. We got the best calibration results when we calibrated about the same time that we normally tested. Uh, well, it, it relates to it relates to how exactly nitrate and phosphate are interacting uh -huh. with the machine. So yeah. the consistency here and how calibration just generally works with nitrate and phosphate is you just want to make sure that you're operating in the same conditions when you're calibrating as you would normally during a test. Uh -huh. What I think is important to know that you really can't modulate your intervals. Consistency is really important. Consistency is very important with the uh, Trident MP. And um, um, I think that's all that you know, we can say about that in terms of best results, do it that way. Now, then this task works just like any other task. You select the MP you're working with, right? And then guess what, Patrick? You get it a video from above Paul. You know, I know those are your favorites. And I can, we'll just yeah. go ahead. I watch gonna, them every time, start to finish. You can you can fast forward if you'd like to, folks. Um, and then you can say, oh, I watched Paul talk about calibration, and I talk about precision and accuracy there, just to kind of give uh, people um, an uh, idea of what to expect, right? And then now you're presented with this option. Are you using your tested aquarium water as the reference solution instead of the calibration solution um, that is included with your MPA, MP kit? And if you are, you just say, yeah, I want to use, you know, um, another, you know, I want to use my aquarium water. And then you would have the ability to enter those values in there. Now, one thing I do want to call out is the, the range there, right? So if your range is above or below, um, you know, let's say your nitrates normally run below 5 ppm, it's probably not going to work well that you're trying to make the Trident calibrate using your uh, aquarium water. In that situation, you do want to use the bottle if your nitrates are below that or if your phosphates are above 1 ppm. And particularly, you do want to use our calibration solution in that. I will have a caveat to that um, here in a little bit, but for now, that is kind of the best path forward, right? And, and there's a little secret, there's a little secret sauce here behind the scenes of the reasons why, but you're going to get the most accurate results in this case. And that's kind of why we pre-configure these ranges um, to yes. make sure that your, your NP is going to give you the most um, reliable, consistent results. And so user Cal has this kind of a proviso as part of it. I click next here. Uh, then oh, you get another video of oh, how, how to put 
the uh, sample tube in the calibration solution. If you are going to use your aquarium water, guess what? You just leave your sample tube right where it is, but just return, be sure to remove the sample line filter. And then guess what? The Trident begins its business. And there'll be another video after this showing the return of the sample line back into the aquarium water and placing the sample line filter back on the sample line. I won't do that because this is an active Trident and I don't want to uh, affect its testing or anything like that right now. I think you'd be controlling and controlling that one. Oh, <laughs> that one right there. We can see, yeah. can see it. Can <laughs> don't see change it my Trident. Don't yeah. do it. Um, so uh, that is the task that's now available for calibrating your MP. So last time we showed you how to do it in the module setup. It didn't give you any of the directions of how to move the lines or anything like that. Now you have that ability to do that. Um, so you can feel a little bit more confident and certain that you're going through the right procedure.